Hey, kia ora, Marky here. Hello, walrus watchers. A uh, quick video on domestic violence, or should I say domestic abuse? And does it matter? Well, I think words can be very important. Um, I have a series called Elegant Speech, which is all about the misuse of words. And sometimes, you know, that can be me just being pedantic, and other times, actually, the words you use and the language you use makes a big difference. And I think that is very much the case when it comes to this issue. Okay, why why is this a problem? Well, I think uh, we have an outdated understanding of what domestic abuse is like. Okay, uh, and we use old fashioned terms like wife, beater and battered housewife. Um, and these terms are kind of fraught with problems. So domestic violence, okay, so physical violence is just one part of domestic abuse, okay. And in many ways, the other parts can actually be far, far worse, okay. Uh, so I think we should be looking at this as domestic abuse. We should be using that term. Uh, that's far preferable. So... Why? Because, you know, violence is serious. Violence can kill people. Violence can put people in hospital, Marky. You know, why are you, why are you saying we shouldn't use the term violence? Well, the violence in a domestic abusive relationship doesn't come alone. We're not looking at the profile of the domestic abuser is not just somebody that loses a temper once in a while and strikes out generally speaking. I'm sure that that profile does exist, you know, somewhere. But the majority, the, the, the common profile is one of control. Okay, so you have a controlling partner who uh, kind of systematically, if you like, breaks down their partner and makes them vulnerable. Okay, and this might sound extreme, but this is what happens. Okay, um, you know, I've trained in this and I've worked with this, this is the reality. So it's a little bit like prisoners of war, really, or people that have been brainwashed or, um, you know, um, violently coerced into some new regime. It is like a kind of a conversion uh, process. So a domestic abuser is interested in control and not kind of necessarily somebody that gets off on violence that can be the case there are sadistic people but it's about control and violence is just one of the tools that a domestic abuser will use to maintain or gain control but it's more subtle stuff uh, which is really sinister so one of the common things of domestic abusers is they will seek to isolate their partner from their friends and family so they'll, they'll maybe move away or they'll say, you know, I don't like your mother or find some way to separate people or badmouth people's friends so that that person becomes very, very isolated. They don't even notice that process that they're being isolated because people find reasons for it. You know, each case, you know, it, it's, a very, um, it's a very crafty business, really. And then there's things like financial control, um, put downs, uh, so telling somebody they're fat or telling somebody that nobody else would would um, would have them and things like that. Gaslighting, which is where you kind of monkey around with people's reality. And uh, this process really kind of dehumanises people. It kind of, it, it can basically, you know, eradicate someone's self-esteem so they feel like they deserve nothing better. And this is done over a period of time softly softly little piece by little piece by little piece so the person doesn't even notice the process and then you know they become a shell of the person they once were and this isn't you know this isn't about weak people either i've seen you know some very strong people who have fallen prey to this kind of abuse okay so a good and i use this term you know in, in heavy inverted commas a good domestic abuser does not use violence because they have secured control through a whole range of other means and they're maintaining control. They would only use violence if they feel that they're about to lose that control, which is the other uh, uh, interesting and terrible and frightening and horrifying element of domestic violence is that people often are most at risk when they're at the point of escape, of getting away from that relationship and often at the risk of death. Okay. And the other thing that's kind of interesting, again, horrible and um, terrifying, is that domestic violence often kicks in during pregnancy. Uh, you know, with a man to a woman, pregnant woman. 
Um, you know, so so it's all about think about control, think about ownership, think about possessiveness. Uh, these are all the hallmarks. So if you uh, you know if you're aware of somebody that seems to be in a relationship where all things are present, and they say, oh, he's never hit me. Uh, or she's never hit me because it's not just a male female thing. That's not necessarily a sign to think, oh, well, we don't need to worry then. Okay, because the uh, psychological abuse could be uh, could be as bad, if not worse, than if the partner was violent. Okay, so that's why I like to use the term domestic abuse rather than domestic violence, because and and this is how it works. Okay, we could probably talk for hours on on the processes involved in this. Um, and they're nasty. And one of the things that they've found is that uh, prisoners of war who've been tortured make a better recovery than people who've been victims of domestic violence. You know, think about that. You know, they make a better recovery. One of the reasons they make a better recovery is uh, they're part of a group, so they, they don't suffer it alone. And also uh, the... Uh, those people are valued by society. Uh, the ill treatment of them is universally condemned by society. So that person is, their experiences are validated. Whereas the experiences of somebody in an abusive relationship are usually invalidated and not taken seriously. And the, the, the full truth very seldom comes out publicly. It's usually kind of hushed up. So the victim of this has to recover on their own uh, with no support, no validation, no encouragement. Uh, and with a self-esteem that's on the floor. But the actual treatment is the same as the torture, but their, and their prospects for recovery are worse. Okay, that's horrifying, isn't it? Uh, so I don't want to leave you kind of feeling uh, hopeless. You know, we, uh, we know a lot about this now. Uh, therapists, clinicians, services of all different kinds. Um, I'm involved in a network of, of services um, that work with this problem from all kinds of different angles and we all work together. So get help, you know, keep yourself safe, uh, be very, very careful, don't make yourself more vulnerable and go to the right people. Um, and, you know, depending on where you are um, in the world, you know, some areas have lots of services, some areas have no services, unfortunately. Um, if you're in an area where there are services, then please use them. You know, keep yourself safe. Don't leave any clues. If you're in a situation where you're with a partner who might respond uh, aggressively uh, to you, you seeking help, you know, be very, very careful. Um, good agencies are aware of that, and they do everything to maintain your confidentiality and your anonymity. And, and you know, they like they don't phone you back and. Uh, leave messages on your answer phone unless you explicitly tell them that that's okay and things like that. So uh, please get help. If if what I've said raises any issues for you, uh, and you don't feel comfortable putting a comment, um, you know, in the in the box below, uh, please contact me via my email. You can actually contact you can actually email me via the website, and that's confidential. So uh, do get in touch. Tell someone. Get help. Don't suffer on your own because this stuff is horrible. It's nightmarish, and you do not deserve it. Nobody deserves to be treated in this way. It's absolutely horrific. You are worthy. And if you have been undermined and your sense of self is diminished, then you know you deserve to have all the help available to restore that and bring yourself back to, to your full, lovely self. Uh, so on that note, Rangi Mario.